What's up guys, we are back with the Build-A-Figure for the most recent, very, very new, very recent, uh, Marvel Legends wave. So this is the Spider-Man No Way Home wave, which has a, a kind of mix of, of figures. So you've got movie stuff, you've got a Gamerverse figure tucked in there, and then you've got a couple of comic figures. And then of course we have a comic Build-A-Figure in Armadillo here. So this is what my focus for this particular wave was. You know I don't get into MCU stuff very much, so this is the this is the thing that I wanted outside of, of course, the comic figures as well. So we're taking a look specifically at the Build-A-Figure just by himself uh, because there's a lot going on with this guy. I know a lot of folks have a lot of hope for what some of this may lend itself to. So Armadillo here has some very interesting parts, uh, some very interesting armor on him. A lot of folks, myself included, would love to see this torso used as a rhino uh, body. And then a lot of this armor sure looks like it could be used if you painted it blue to make it into an A-bomb figure. So there is a, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. He is not perfect by any means, but he is, uh, he's a fun figure. And you know me, I like big bruiser kind of figures, especially when it comes to baths. So this is, this is a fun one. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around, uh, all that good stuff. So we've got a head that seems to be very locked down, like mine is super, super locked down, and I don't know if it's supposed to be this way or not, because the head just doesn't want to move, really. Uh, well, it, it moves, but it doesn't really do a whole lot, so it can't really look up. It looks down slightly, and then you've got a little bit of tilt and rotation, but it's, it's a double ball peg that sits in that neck, but the peg in the neck itself does not move. Uh, it is super, super tight. I've heated it up and tried to move it around. Maybe it's just mine. I'm not really sure, uh, but it does not want to move. I need to give it a little bit more work, I suppose, but right now it doesn't really do a whole lot. Uh, arms go out at the shoulders. This is one area where I'm not the biggest fan of this figure because this piece of armor on his back, it's a separate piece. It pegs into his back and it sits over his shoulders. So when you get his arms out, as you can see, it wants to lift this up, which is just not all that aesthetically pleasing. When you kick him forward, it does the exact same thing. So of course his arms can't rotate all the way around, but if you go upwards, it does that craziness, which just doesn't look good. So when he's at like sort of neutral poses or you angle him a certain way, he's gonna look fine. But that armor is going to rise up as you move him. You've got your bicep swivel. We've got a single jointed elbow. He's not pinless, but the way that he's constructed, he, he looks pinless from the outside. Obviously you can see this one here, but they have these overlays on the, on the arms here that cover uh, what would have been a pin. So that's kind of cool. So he's like uh, semi pinless in some ways. So you've got your hinge there. Uh, we've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. Nothing gets in the way here. Uh, we've got our diaphragm cut here. So he goes all the way around. He tilts side to side, backwards a little bit, forwards a little bit, and then full rotation as well. These armor plates on the back overlap in a specific spot so that they don't really impede that. You've got legs that go out pretty far for such a big guy. They kick forward all the way. They kick backwards a little bit. You do have your thigh cut there. We've got a single jointed knee, basically 90 degrees. And then you've got rocker at the ankles, really, really good rocker. Backwards on the hinge works really nicely, but he has no forward hinge on those ankles. And it does actually pose, no pun intended, a little bit of a posing problem because he wants to he wants to lean backwards a little bit because he's so top heavy. So you've got to pose him in such a way that he's sort of hunched forward just a little bit, just a little bit at the uh, at the torso and the ab area, so that it can put a little bit of pressure on those feet. Otherwise, the fact that he is standing straight, straight up, uh, he will kind of want to lurch backwards. So he's he's basically like a normal big monster bath. Like there's really nothing surprising here, but he does have a few limitations just because of the overlays and then what at least for my figure is with that. Uh, that ball that is inserted down into that neck. Now, aesthetically speaking, I am really happy with this guy. He is a uh, he's a what you see is what you get kind of build a figure. There's nothing else to him, so he's just the figure you know, the sum of all his parts. And and I think they really knocked it out of the park in terms of the overall aesthetics because there's a lot of cool stuff going on here from these crazy monster hands with these super big claws, the same with the feet down there. And then of course, the big thing with this guy being not just his size, but all of this armor plating all over him that really makes him stand out. He's got this sort of orangey brown color, uh, which is pretty consistent throughout. It's even in the hinges on the uh, on the legs down here. So, you know, they've, they've taken care to make sure that those hinges have the armor so it's not just the flesh underneath and what's really cool is they did the same thing on the arms as well so the armor is on the outside of the arm here and the hinge is sort of split down the middle so the hinge is 
half the armor and half of his flesh inside of that, which I thought was kind of a nice touch on top of the fact that you can't see half the pegs on this guy because of the way he's built. So he's not pinless, but he's like a semi-pinless kind of guy. The musculature on the body underneath is really nice. I'm a big fan of this. I mean, again, you could see this body being reused for a rhino for sure, like a lot of folks are, are kind of hoping. There's a nice amount of, uh, of color uh, on the torso, so he's got kind of like a pale white that is uh, fading into sort of like a tan almost, so there is a decent amount of paint there, just to bring out some of the difference in his in his hide, I suppose, and then overall accentuate the sculpt a little bit, especially around the collar, you can see varying layers, but you can see like, you know, even his uh, his abs here look like armor plates almost, so there's a there's a lot going on with this guy, and it, that sculpt actually does go all the way, all the way up in there, so he's got, you know, like a 12 pack, uh, kind of hidden by that diaphragm cut. But I'm a really big fan of the way this figure looks. Uh, he's imposing, he's big, he's beefy. Uh, he is you know, hindered in some ways when it comes to articulation. But if you're like me, a lot of times your builder figures are likely just going to be standing at a, you know, semi-neutral pose, looking imposing and, and brooding and menacing. And this guy's going to do that really well. He's uh, he's definitely a lesser known figure, but I think they did a really solid job of sort of giving him his due by making sure to, to give us all of these different parts when it comes to all this armor that's over top. You know, again, this is a separate piece here, so you've even got like that body underneath to give you an idea of what that looks like and it's a it's a big hulking body so I, I'm, I'm really happy uh, to see all of this here and again it's it's super easy to put this back on so you can just pop it pop it on like that and he, he's ready to go he actually looks pretty cool without it too so if you don't want to use that I suppose you can do something different and then of course he's got this head sculpt which I mean it kind of looks like he's got like one of those like super old football helmets where it was just like the leather helmet that sat around a uh, around the head it's kind of like that in terms of its construction so it's the helmet I guess if that's what you want to call it, the armor helmet with the face inserted inside I do think that mine is a little bit off center so I might try to pop that face out of there and then reseat it uh, but otherwise I mean I'm happy with the expression on it the pupilless eyes always gets me and then again more of that really solid sculpt in the teeth in that expression and then tons and tons of that scale work all around that head uh, it just accentuates its figure so he is a, a very weird build a figure in the confines of just character selection in many ways and then he's also kind of an oddball when it comes to this wave in general but he's a really fun figure that has a lot going for him, not at all to take away from the fact that he is absolutely massive too. And of course we need to do some size comparisons to illustrate how big he is. So uh, because I don't have a ton of stuff unpacked still, we will go with what I've got available. So we've got a, a bigger Marvel Legends figure here. So here's Colossus, give you an idea of how big he is by comparison. So Armadillo is a tall figure, but he's super, super massive. He's very, very wide. He's He's a big, thick boy, really. And then we've got the Build-A-Figure Colossus over here from the AOA 2 wave. And you can see that they're about the same in terms of height, but again, he is he's completely put in his place in terms of overall bulk and mass. And then here is... Uh, Here's a more standard legend. So here's Captain Carter, and you can see that, I mean, she is just absolutely dwarfed uh, by, by all of these guys, but specifically by Armadillo. And then maybe for something that is not a Legends figure, here he is with the Ultimates lion -O. So Ultimates lion is, of course, you know, the Super 7 figure. He is a 7-ish inch figure, so he's, he's in a different scale entirely. And you can see that he is... Uh, shorter than Armadillo, and then of course a lot smaller in overall bulk. So we are getting a really, really large bath here. Uh, he's very heavy, he's very substantial, he feels very big in your hands, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice, nice big figure that's going to add a lot of shelf presence to maybe your grouping of lesser known villains. So yeah, this guy's pretty fun. That's really what it comes down to. He is definitely on the lesser known side of things, but I like that because I'm familiar with him, so it's cool to get these lesser known characters. And he stacks up to pretty much every builder figure you can throw him against. He's huge, he's hulking, he's very beefy. He has some hindrances when it comes to his articulation, 
But at the end of the day, a lot of this guy is really about the aesthetics and the look and the overall shelf presence because he's definitely going to draw your eye. He's a little bit different. He is huge. He's very wide. He's not necessarily the tallest Build-A-Figure we've ever gotten, but he is among the, the thickest and the, the girthiest. So I'm really happy with the overall presentation on this guy, and he's just hard to put down. He's a lot of fun. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Armadillo Build-A-Figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time. 